Now we're going to look at the changes that happen to the airflow as it passes through a shock wave. We can see a close-up view of the airflow flowing through a small shock wave on the top surface of a wing. The airflow is accelerating and the grey shading shows the area of supersonic flow. Note once again that the shock wave is located at the rear of the area of supersonic flow. The velocity of the airflow downstream of the shock wave is subsonic, less than Mach 1. The air has been decelerated by the shock wave. And, in accordance with Bernoulli's theorem, if the velocity of the air decreases, its pressure will increase. The temperature of the airflow will increase as it flows through the shock wave. And the density of the air will also increase. All these changes take place within the shock wave. The airflow enters the front of the shock wave with one set of properties and exits the shock wave with a different set of properties. A further effect is that the airflow will begin to separate from immediately behind the shock wave. At speeds just above m crit, this is not a problem, but as Mach number increases, it will start to become a limiting factor to further acceleration. We examine the effect of these changes in a future lesson. There are two slightly different types of shock wave, the normal and oblique. The following data may be required to answer written exam questions, but is of no operational importance. We will examine the normal shock wave first. It is called a normal shock wave because it is 90 degrees to the upstream flow. As previously pointed out, the boundary layer enters the shock wave with one set of properties and emerges with a different set of properties. The velocity and Mach number decrease to subsonic speed. The airflow energy is greatly decreased. The static pressure and density are greatly increased. The temperature of the boundary layer is increased. The local speed of sound is increased because of the temperature rise. The temperature rise of the boundary layer through a shock wave is one of the major causes of the increase in drag during high-speed flight. To summarize, velocity and energy decrease and everything else increases through a normal shock wave. We will now consider the other type of shock wave the oblique shock wave, so called because it is more than 90 degrees to the upstream flow. The boundary layer changes direction as it passes through an oblique shock wave, a noticeable difference from the normal shock wave. Downstream of the oblique shock wave, the velocity and Mach number decrease but remain supersonic. The airflow energy decreases. The static pressure temperature and the local speed of sound all increase. To summarize, as with the normal shock wave, the velocity and energy decrease and everything else increases through an oblique shock wave. But please note the differences. The boundary layer energy, static pressure and density change more through a normal shock wave than through an oblique shock wave. The velocity and Mach number decrease through both types of shock wave. Through the normal, it decreases to subsonic, whereas through the oblique, it remains supersonic. The other difference is that through an oblique shock wave, the airflow changes direction. We've just seen the changes to the properties of the airflow as it passes through a shock wave. We'll now examine how these changes affect the aeroplane. The diagram shows an aerofoil section with the vertical axis depicting decreasing pressure. The blue line is the reduction in pressure on the top surface. The red line is the pressure on the bottom surface. The difference between the two pressures generates lift. The center of the area of the top and bottom surface pressure distribution is what determines the position of the center of pressure 
and it is the distribution of pressure that will be changing. There will always be a small amount of separated air at the trailing edge, called the wake. In the top right-hand corner is a sketch graph showing lift coefficient against Mach number. The red dot is a sample lift coefficient at Mach 0.75, our assumed M crit. In the bottom right-hand corner is a sketch graph showing drag coefficient against Mach number. The red dot is a sample drag coefficient at our assumed M crit. If M crit is exceeded by even the smallest margin, a shock wave will form on the top surface, with an insignificant amount of airflow separation immediately behind it. We will now see what happens to the distribution of pressure with increasing Mach number. More of the airflow will be accelerated to supersonic speed, and the area of supersonic flow on the top surface will be bigger. Because the shock wave is always at the rear of the area of supersonic flow, the shock wave will start to move rearwards. With the initial acceleration to Mach 0.84, the shock wave doesn't move very far aft, but it will become thicker and start to have a greater effect on the airflow through it. There will be a lot happening during these next few animations, so don't try to watch everything. Please concentrate on the shape of the suction and how it changes. The shock wave makes the top surface pressure change shape. There is now a negative pressure differential on the aft portion of the wing, and consequently the center of pressure has moved rearwards. Rearwards movement of the center of pressure is a significant development, which will be examined in detail later. There has been no loss of lift. In fact, during the acceleration to Mach 0.84, the lift coefficient has increased slightly. Unfortunately, the drag has also increased, which is one of the limiting factors to operating an aircraft at speeds higher than about Mach 0.84. Please also note the increased airflow separation from immediately behind the shock wave. At higher Mach numbers, this will become another limiting factor. We have introduced the changes that take place when operating an aircraft up to a typical maximum operating Mach number. We can now examine higher Mach numbers and why we don't want to operate our aircraft at those speeds. The reasons why it is not wise or efficient to exceed approximately Mach 0.84 will now be examined. If the Mach number is allowed to exceed approximately Mach 0.84, a typical maximum operating Mach number, the increased airflow separation from behind the shock wave, will start to cause a phenomenon known as high-speed buffet. Observe the airflow separation increasing and forward movement of the center of pressure. The separated airflow from the shock wave will extend beyond the tailplane. A shock wave has now started to form on the bottom surface and will cause the bottom surface pressure to change shape. Further acceleration to Mach 0.9 shows both shock waves moving further rearwards and the changes in pressure distribution on the wing has caused the center of pressure to move forwards again. The lift coefficient has decreased radically and the drag coefficient has continued to increase both of which reduces operating efficiency. Airflow separation has also increased. Further acceleration sees both shock waves moving all the way back to the trailing edge. There is now supersonic flow over the entire top and bottom wing surfaces. The pressure distribution has evened out, and the center of pressure has moved aft. The lift coefficient has consequently started to recover and the drag coefficient has reached its highest value. At a speed just exceeding Mach 1, another shock wave starts to form, called the bow wave. You will now see the center of pressure moving aft to the 50% chord position. With the center of pressure at the 50% chord position, static longitudinal stability is increased. 
the bow wave has moved aft to the leading edge and is said to attach between Mach 1.3 and 1.4. At supersonic speed, the lift coefficient has started to level off, but at a value less than at subsonic speed. The drag coefficient has also started to level off, but at a value higher than at subsonic speed. To summarize, as the Mach number is increased to approximately Mach 0.84, Drag increases only slightly, so the advantage of a higher true airspeed is achieved efficiently. The disadvantage of flying faster than MCRIT is that the centre of pressure will move rearwards, giving a nose-down pitching moment called Mach Tuck. Mach Tuck can be prevented by the fitment of a system called Mach Trim, which was explained in detail earlier. There are two major reasons why Mach numbers above approximately 0.84 must be avoided. The first is because of excessive airframe buffeting, caused by the separated airflow from the shock wave contacting the tailplane. And secondly, the massive increase in drag would make operation of the aeroplane too expensive.